Today's video is about how to record fraud charges in your QuickBooks Online file. You can also do this in QuickBooks Desktop. Unfortunately, in today's day and age, fraud is a prevalent thing in society. Much of the time, you have no clue where you swiped your card and when it was stolen. As a business owner, this can greatly hurt your cash flow if you have a bank account that's overdrawn because of this or a credit card that reached its limit because of the fraud charges. The first round of defense is always to pay attention to your banking transactions, and when something is off, make sure you contact your bank or credit card company so they can get the charges to stop and refund it back to you. First thing we want to do is go to your chart of accounts. Click on the green new button in the top corner. Select asset. Select other asset. For the tax account, select other long-term asset. For the name, type in fraud charge or fraud expense, whichever works for you. And then click save. The reason why we created this account as another asset account on the balance sheet and not an expense account in the profit and loss is because these charges are not true expenses since they're fraud charges and will be refunded back to you when the bank or credit card does their refunds. The other reason we do this is because of the timing issues. If these charges took place at the end of the year and you end up expensing them out in the tax return and then the credit card company or bank refunds you the money in the following year, you run into an issue where you get the expense in the prior year and then get the income or negative expense in the following year because of this. Since they report on the balance sheet, there is no impact on your profit and loss. Thus, we just increase the asset balance when the fraud expense occurs and decrease that same account on the balance sheets when the refund reimbursement comes through. Therefore, no taxable impact. Now, let's look at an example of a fraud charge. Let's navigate to your bank feed section and find the first charge. The charge can be books by Bessie. Make sure you click on it to open up the edit window. Make sure the vendor name is entered and the category is going to be fraud charge. Let's look at the resulting financial report. Go to reports, balance sheet. If you scroll down during that time frame, you can see fraud charges has now been increased to $55 for that charge we just put in the system. Refund time. So let's click on the bank feeds, scroll all the way down. Unfortunately, it took this long to get our refund back, but you see the refund here on 731, books by Bessie, and you want to use the account fraud charges again and then click add. Let's take a final look at our balance sheet. Make sure we change the report date to 731 when the charge occurred. And we can scroll down and see now fraud charges is zero. And if you open it up, you can see that our expense is there and then our refund is there. If you had multiple charges that were fraud, you can classify each one of these fraud charges account and as they begin to be refunded back to you, refund them back to the fraud charge account. Therefore, you always see a balance that's owed back to you at some point in time for you to go back to your bank and credit card and figure out the estimated time that they're going to be refunded back to you. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you the step-by-step -step process recording the fraud charges and corresponding refunds in your QuickBooks Online file. You can repeat these same exact steps in your QuickBooks desktop file with no issues.